Do we have any questions in the audience for, uh, for our panelists? Um, if you do, just walk up to either of the mics here. Um, we can also fire up on Twitter. I can check your things and on Weixin. I'll turn on my Weixin, so, you know, location-based services. Oh, actually, I don't have my phone because it inter interferes. So. so, yes, we have a question. Uh, my question is for David. It's yeah, about hi. the innovation and the strategy for Tencent. I mean, uh, well, I like Tencent very much. I use QQ and WeChat every day. But right now, uh, Tencent is a kind of a public enemy in the market because, <laughs> you know, every time if there is something, uh, some new products or some new business model in the market, Tencent will copy it and leverage its customer, huge customer base to kill those uh, young companies and startups. So mm. I don't know if it's a kind of the strategy of the company, <laughs> or next day we will see another QQ Alibaba or QQ Jifuba like that. So is that the strategy of the company? Will you keep it yeah. or will you change it in the future? So I think... Um I understand your question. Yeah, actually, I've actually never. <laughs> so usually my colleagues in China have to deal with these questions. We should First at least I've ask them. What, do you have a company or you're a student? Or? Yeah, do uh, you I'm feel? I'm a student. Okay, you're no, thinking so. about a company. Okay. <laughs> so I think. I don't, and it, uh, yeah, I heard some people clapping too. So I, I, I guess it's a it's a big problem. Um, I'm not very exposed to that. Like, this is the first time I've had this question before. But I do read the articles and the magazine. I know when I was back in China three months ago, that was like the front page topic on a lot of magazines was. Um, Evil Why penguin. doesn't yeah. China have a Facebook? Because Tencent kills every company. It was something like that. It was like, didn't make sense to me. I thought like, hey, we're the Facebook in China, and like we were been around before Facebook, but somehow we killed Facebook. I don't. I didn't really get it. So obviously, like, I'm gonna have a defensive answer to that. But um, you know, I think you're right. Like, we offer a lot of kinds of services, and um, you know, if one of our services does well, that means, I guess that means someone shrinks. I mean, it's not necessarily the case that like if we do well, someone has to shrink. I think there's a scenario where like, there's many cases where we grow like in games, like we have, may have great games with really huge numbers, but there's all kinds of other gaming companies out there that are doing fine. It just really depends on the game. So, um, you know, I don't really know what to say. It, it's, not a, it's not a strategy of the company to see smaller companies not do well. Um, that's certainly not the way we think about it, but we definitely target certain areas um, that have been sensitive. I think like when we did our browser and the browser really grew, that was sensitive. I guess um, there's a huge debate when we went to antivirus and then it became very public with the company 360 and let's not even go there because it's just like, <laughs> I think people like took sides without even knowing exactly what was happening. But like, yeah, I mean, it's sensitive when we go to different areas. I think um, we're aware of that. What we do, though, as a company is we, we find areas we think are strategic and add a lot of value to our users, and we definitely are going to offer a solution there um, to try to uh, be more. Um, I think we went through a long period of time as Tencent where we pretty much did everything ourselves. Um, and for a long time at Tencent, we didn't invest in other companies either. This was kind of Duncan's point earlier. So I think that, um, that didn't give us many opportunities to share in our success with other companies. But I think we're doing a lot more investing now. We tend to invest, actually in China, we don't tend to acquire companies. We tend to like invest 10 or 15% in companies. And I hear from our M&A team that we may do up to like 100 deals this year. So there's like 100 companies in China alone. There's probably like 100 companies that are getting money from us. And hopefully they're not bad mouthing us, but you, you never know, right? <laughs> but you know, and, and I think a, the, probably the most important development in the past like 18 months or so about us um, doing more with smaller companies that we don't work with necessarily is that we have an open platform, kind of like Facebook. Um, it expands uh, more of our services than just Facebook. We have, you know, like on our QZone service, which is kind of like a social networking equivalent in China or an instant messaging service, QQ. We have um, all kinds of opportunities for apps to go on. We call it open platform. Our internal teams complain about that a lot, saying, uh, hey, like now any game company can go on our open platform in QZone, and that's really putting a lot of pressure on us inside Tencent. Like, seems like the company isn't giving us enough support because now any company can just you know, go on our QZone platform, and they're totally kicking butt, and like, we're actually limited by the amount of resources we can get from Tencent. We don't get enough ads. We don't get enough support. And the companies outside raise VC, and they completely attack our QZone platform. So um, you know, it's like, I, I think that's been a, a, great, uh, a great advance in terms of like, our ability to work with a lot of companies. So, so for example, like if the company that you're concerned about there, if they did a QZone app, they could probably very aggressively do all kinds of things to try to take as much of the Tencent user base as they wanted to. Um, and that would, we would kind of celebrate that because we want all of our app partners to be very successful. Um, but you know, I can't really, you know, we'll, we're gonna compete with other companies because we just offer so many types of services. And you know, that's just kind of 
how it is. Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you on that one. Question over there. I'd love to just say something. Everyone thought like, oh, Tencent's awesome. What a great answer. But you know, it's complicated. We're, con we're competing in the market. So sorry. Uh, thank you. I also have a question for David. So don't worry. My question isn't that tough. So um, I hear one point you mentioned is that like Ch China is trying to um, trying to spread their own like iPad, their own Apple, stuff like that. And I'm curious about their, how would you, how would exactly do that? Would that be more realized by internal growth? For example, you, co you culture your own environment or by like bringing people to advanced places like Silicon Valley to make them fit in the environment and let them yeah. bring back their benefits? I'm asking because like Amos Lucy, it's a company that brings Chinese entrepreneurs to the United States to start great companies. And uh, it's very interesting to me that being that uh, last year I heard uh, there was a specific proposal by the time that Steve Jobs had died, there's a lot of people in China just worrying about why isn't there a Steve Jobs in China? And there's one really funny proposal from, I think it's the Ningbo government. They wanted to invest in 70 million yuan to like raise 5,000 Steve Jobs. Yeah, that to me- Sounds like the boys from Brazil, that's pretty scary. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that to me is like a raising chicken or like yeah, pigs on the farm. Uh, like let's not, not go there, yeah. Jobs. yeah. But do you think this will work or like what exactly but, and maybe Lucy, we can ask that as work? well, just generally. I, how to I think it's such a difficult question. Like, what really leads to innovation? And um, it, it's something very unique to us right here in Silicon Valley, especially Stanford, kind of at the center of it all. Uh, yeah, it's a great discussion for everyone in the room here. I, I don't claim to have all the answers on it, but I have thought about it a little bit recently because we were having discussions on this internally. I think at the end of the day, um, just one idea that comes to mind. Is I think people really benefit um, to be innovative from being interdisciplinary. 就是他们需要就是一个很好的传承人要了解很多不同的范围的事情他要了解数学他要了解艺术这个Steve I think this is very important like how do you actually encourage people to integrate. I, I don't know enough about the Chinese education system. I didn't go through it myself, so I can't say like this is how the Chinese education system works, but my sense is like, generally speaking, it tends to lead you in a certain direction. Like you're gonna be an engineer, you need to get good grades, in fact, you need to be like a genius at math and all this stuff, but like are people saying, and you know, it's also pretty cool if you know how to play guitar and you're a painter. I think like somehow like that doesn't really enter the picture in China very often. It's not just only the education system. I think it's also cultural. I think it's like, maybe even parents, you know, I'm a parent too, I, we should all, like everyone in the society can kind of share some of the blame. This is it's pretty much the, how it is, honestly. Like, and, and I think like when you look at someone like a Steve Jobs, um, they're kind of like Renaissance men. Like they, they know a lot about fonts and they know a lot about chips. You know, fonts, just like, what, how do you say fonts in Chinese? Um, I don't know, whatever. You know, font, like this is like very artistic though, right? Like someone who's interested in fonts. And he said, like, that's like the secret to Apple's early success is that we, we had beautiful fonts. I mean, you could just like eat the fonts. They're so beautiful. <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with the, the, the speed of the processing power and that kind of stuff, but he brought this all together, right? But calligraphy, so think, calligraphy is the future. <laughs> well, but that, that's very Chinese, right? And, yeah. and like almost every Chinese person is an artist already. That's exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. You're a musician just talking by the tones, right? You've, you've nailed the tones. Oh yeah, yeah, my tones are terrible. <laughs> I have no, no capability. But I, I think it's important now, uh, you know, but maybe that's like the next step for China. And I don't know, I don't think you really leave it to anyone. I think it's like up to the individual and, and you know, like encouraging schools, like schools that encourage you to also play instruments, schools that encourage you to be an engineer, but also learn painting. Like, how, and also just encouraging people to study kind of whatever they want. Like, I think a lot of Stanford kids can probably, you have to get do enough studying to get this degree here. But then meanwhile, you can be studying all kinds of crazy stuff as well as the thing you had to do to get your degree, engineering degree, whatever it was. And I think that's a starting point. Maybe There's Lucy, a lot more have... factors than that, but that's a good starting point. Lucy, right? you'll show me sorry. Thank you. you did, uh... Yeah, sorry. We'll, we'll, take, we'll take the next question and hopefully address it to Lucy, that'll be good. And then, yes, this lady here, and then we'll take this, this gentleman and then we'll wrap up. If it could be addressed to Lucy, if you could. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, question for Lucy. So, Duncan, I should ask question in English or Mandarin. Oh. Okay, then use Chinese. Okay. Lucy, you're hello. Lucy, you're hello. Today, we. Oh, actually, actually, can you do it in English because I? No, it's okay. You do it in Chinese, right? It's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe, maybe they have the they have the thing. Sorry. Okay. So, 
呃，一个我非常尊敬的这个中国企业的记者，他叫李翔，他最近写了一篇文章，是说阿里巴巴希望阿里巴巴是做一个强大的好人。刚才听您的演讲，我也相信阿里巴巴确实是在这样做，做一个强大的好人。那今天我们的这个 topic 是。关于这个商业模型的创新，那我想创业商业模型的创新，多少跟组织结构的创新是有关系的。因为我正好看到您的这个 title 是 Chief People Officer， 所以我想这应该是一个巴阿里巴巴比较独特的一个组织结构创新的结果。那究竟是什么动机，造成了这样的一个比较新颖的岗位的诞生？以及您作为这个 Chief People Officer。作为阿里巴巴集团，您的主要的使命和职责是什么？谢谢。对我，我从阿里巴巴成立第一天开始，其实我的主要的工作是 HR， 所以，所以这个其实，呃，呃，马马云说过，他说在阿里巴巴两个工作是最不好做的，呃，一个是 marketing， 一个是 HR， 因为别的他都不懂，这两个他最懂。所以他可以随时随地以任何方式 challenge， 当然这是开玩笑。但是其实说明就是说，这个呃阿里巴巴从成立第一天开始就非常重视人、重视团队、重视文化。所以其实阿里巴巴在还是一个 startup 的时候，我们就有很多跟文化有关的一些一些定义、一些一些一些要求。然后呃，然后就是那种氛围，或者说大家怎么互动、怎么怎么怎么沟通的这些这些很多约定俗成的这些东西，我们把它叫做 core value。那么这个这个事情就是这是。三年来一直没有改变过，没一直没有改变过。所以呢，第一个要回答你的问题，就是说 Chief People Officer 这个不是一个，呃，就是对阿里巴巴来说，它是一个很很很，我我自己觉得这是，当然不是我自己觉得啊，但但对阿里巴巴来说，它是一个非常非常重要的，就是在各个 business 里面，它的 HR partner 是一个非常非常重要的一个 role， 因为我们这所有的生意，所有的这个要服务客户都跟团队有关。然后第二个呢，就是说阿里巴巴在 HR 或者在文化的这个呃体系上面，呃，我我们对于这种文化价值观的这种要求，呃，其实是非常具体而细节的，不是不是就是口号啊，也不是一个只只是一个理念啊，有很多具体的要求，比如说他会跟他的。呃呃呃，跟他的绩效考核这些都是有关系的。然后跟他呃，平常很多很具体的要求，他的主管跟他的沟通，跟他的这个，包括我们给主管、给所有管理团队的这个要求，他的业绩部分只占百分之四十。就是说到具体一点，最后你怎么去给他，就是评价他年底一年下来的这个 performance， 他的直接的业务部分只占百分之四十，还有百分之三十是跟他的这个团队的这个。呃，氛围啊，这个梯人才梯队培养啊，这些这些有关。然后还有百分之三十呢，是跟他的这个个人，就是说给这个团队创造了一个什么样的氛围，这些这些东西有关。所以，所以这个比重是非常重。所以，我想阿里巴巴就是我们在文化和人才结构方面的话。呃，有非常多的呃系统和这个呃和很多的这个管理结构在支撑，它不完全是虚的东西，啊、呃，所以这个是我我想回答你的这个。最后的问题，呃、uh, ，this last one because you've been very patient but super quick and、sure. quick answer sorry。Okay, then one very quick question. Ah,、uh, you know everyone's very excited about Weixin slash WeChat. What is the grand vision? I really appreciate that. That's really nice. You didn't work for、um, Tencent, no? Okay. No, no.、Uh, <laughs> She didn't work for Alibaba, I think. Well, I think you know, <laughs> it's it's doing well in China. It's actually the first time ever that it seems like we've been able to appeal to, like, the people in this it's room. It's the Gangnam like, style you know, app, right? I mean, it's <laughs> transcending. People、Asia. are like, yeah, like like <laughs> older people are willing to use it. People that are like white collar workers. So that's really exciting. I don't think we did anything special to get that. It's just like the first time it happened. I think because we started on smartphones and maybe in the early stages, the people using the service on smartphones happened to be like more. Like white-collar workers are kind of more elitist, you know, in the context of China. I hate to use that term, but like you know, kind of higher-end users.、Um, you know, like for every product at Tencent, we just iterate. We we work very closely with customers. We try to understand their needs, and we just keep iterating. So I think that's like there's going to be a lot of more services coming up, but it's really coming out of、um, deep interactions with、uh, WeChat users. One thing that's really exciting, particularly from my perspective, as like the international guy at Tencent, is that.、Um, It started growing pretty rapidly outside of China. It's like one of the first time ever I can remember we had a Tencent product that organically drew,、uh, grew a lot. We're like I think we're number one in not just like you know Greater China like Hong Kong Taiwan, but like also like Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, Thailand. Saudi. We're like really strong in Turkey a couple weeks ago. I don't know where we are right now. I'd have to check.、Uh, 
Um, but we were like number one for a couple of weeks in Turkey. Like we were doing really strong in Saudi Arabia and some other countries. So that was all really organic. Um, so that's very exciting. I, I'd love to see us do more internationally. Uh, we have a small team that's working on getting us. Uh, uh, actually, you know, we don't do a lot of marketing necessarily. We really try to cater the product to the users in other countries. So that's pretty challenging for us to think deeply about Chinese users and think deeply about like Western users, like people around here in Palo Alto, like talking to users around here, and doing both of those well at the same time because that's really, really never been done before, at least in like communication services or social networking. Like I don't think there's been a service that's truly like covered China and the West before, so it's a really big challenge. Like I mean, Facebook's big, but they're not really in China, and like you know, we've done things in China, we're not out here. So that's a challenge because the China market is like at least twice as big a, a, as U.S. So any request coming from China is like going to have more magnitude than even something from the U.S. because it's twice, more than twice as big, and it's growing. And the U.S. has pretty much stopped. The, even the technology shift to the mobile that maybe brings it brings it to the yeah. Next so, so yeah. So I'm, if I'm kind of muddling through an answer, that's because like that's kind of where we are. We're going step by step. We're focusing on users. We're trying to get the product uh, to be more attractive to users outside of China. At the same time, like improving it in China. Um, I'd love to see it get more traction. I'm actually really happy that you raised the question. That's nice um, because it's the first time anyone ever cared about a 10 cent service outside of China that I can remember. So thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we're yeah. done. Oh, thank you very much, David and Lucy. A big yeah. round of applause. Very. Good.